come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Welcome back if you're a regular listener. Welcome aboard if this is your first time. We hope that it will be a uh, circus of amazing and entertaining subjects tonight as we discuss our final film in a uh, four week long adventure that we undertook with you starting back in uh, December of 2018, where we asked you to suggest a bunch of movies and uh, you did, and then you voted on them and we watched them. So that was an amazing series. It started with detention. <laughs> that feels Amaz- like it amazingly started with it. It feels like a long that time feels ago. like it was so long ago. Well, just, <laughs> so long ago and such a long movie. We had a number of uh, suggestions, but we a only number, went with at the, least fifty, and we went with the top four vote getters. So it was detention, uh, super. Mario Brothers, right. mm-hmm. magic, magic, now tonight's movie. But first of all, before we get to that, we want to ask you a gigantic favor, listener. Will you do us a favor? Go on over to iTunes, Podcast Addict, Tune In Radio, wherever you found us. Give us a like or a star rating because all of that stuff helps us in our goal to bring the Saturday Night Free Show to all the four corners of the globe. To the world. And if your movie didn't get picked this time, don't worry. Because it might come back next year, yes, or it sir. might be on one of our lists. It's That's true. Right. It's very true. Hope to, is not lost. That, that, is, that is a nice thing about doing the viewers, uh, the viewers pick because they give us a big list of movies, and you're just like, mm, all right. Side note, put yeah. that. On yeah, the we list. make a note of all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so you never know. One of your movies may end up on the list sometime this yeah. year, which I think happened several times. Last time we I did so. listener's choice, we got a lot of stuff, and I think I know I picked a few. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure we covered a few of them afterwards. Yep. So hope right, springs your, eternal. Yeah, your movie may become legendary on the Saturday Night. Freak it's show. true. Mm-hmm. So before we begin. We should probably introduce ourselves. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Allie. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie that was chosen by... You. You. (laughs) (laughs) You sounded so morose about that. No, the guy's name was you. He's at (laughs) the uh, end of uh, four weeks um, of doing this. So uh, we watched the movie called Train to Busan. From the year... Uh, right. 2006. <laughs> From the year 16? recently. Filmed 2016. Thank you very much. 2016. <laughs> a very recent one. And directed by Sang Ho Yoon. Uh, this is a South him. Korean uh, film. Uh, what Train kind to Busan. Of film? And we're going to go with a zombie action thriller drama comedy. Wow, just get it all in there. Yep. Every is, genre. Because when you go to the movies and you pay your admission, damn it, you, you want to be entertained. It. You want to see everything. Yep. The only thing that they missed was the musical portion of the program. I don't know. I don't there know. was no, musical no, moments no. in this movie <laughs> there was singing. we called attention there to. There was singing. There was musical. Singing, there was music. Yes. There were in, it felt like interludes in this movie. So. Someone sang a song. It's a musical. musical. <laughs> I've always liked, uh, I think, like personally, Mm-hmm. Korean cinema may be second only to American Italian Hollywood cinema. Oh. cinema. I think it's well, it's the most po- it's it's the most uh it's the closest to like the Hollywood uh production. Like everything's you know like Oh, you the, mean high like, budget. Yeah. High budget. Like high budget and like, good production yeah. value. I mean, I know like Bollywood is also like extremely technically was, proficient. That's, that's what I hear. I haven't watched a lot Too of many Bollywood crane movies. shots. Yeah, crane crane shots everywhere. It's more like old Hollywood in Bollywood. It, that's exactly that's, what it is. It feels yeah. like the big, yeah, but like, come down on a whole no, number yeah. going on. Yeah, totally agree, but popularity-wise. Bollywood, I think. Bollywood is, like, is yeah. huge. I think so, yeah. Outside yeah. of the United huge. States and the rest of the world. Yeah. 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 Korean but, horror is really good, though. Like, Korean action is really... Mm-hmm. Just Korean well, films yeah. in yeah. general, I think, are like mm-hmm. extremely well uh, made. Because yeah. I've always thought like Japanese movies look... You know, they... they st- I, I don't know what it is that they're... they're uh, I mean, obviously, they have a film um, industry. Sure. And they have, you know, um, facilities and all that and crew and all that. But they always feel much cheaper than... Yeah. You yeah. Know, like American uh, Hollywood films. But South Korean movies feel... Like I mean, they're totally like the, yeah. The the like, especially with this movie, like the tone, the pacing, mm-hmm. it was very similar to action movies that are produced in America. Yeah, Japanese movies, I don't necessarily feel that a lot of them bore me. Sorry, but yeah, the pacing is yeah, but the pacing is very different. I guess maybe that's what I'm saying. There's a, there's a kind of a, a, a 
what are you saying? A parody between yeah. South Korean cinema and Hollywood. Yeah. American are cinema. they trying to not to? Are, are they trying to mimic those those beats? Like, or, or is this just something that feels is is the natural language of cinema? That they're going for. I think. I wonder. I feel like it might be both. Maybe they. Maybe, I think maybe they've caught on that the flow of American movies usually is just more popular. You know, it's it's more attainable to the rest of the world. Yeah, but have you ever seen like the Russians try to do like? It's uh, bad. <laughs> You can no. stop there. Me? Have you seen the Russians try to do anything? <laughs> you know, but that's you Ru- know, what, I mean, like the, yeah. the Russian were... film industry. I, no. Have you seen their Avengers knockoff? Oh God, Is that the, with, with the, the wolf bear, bear guy. The bear? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I want to yeah. watch. That I would watch. <laughs> That, we might that looks should, great. We might. We should probably watch we that on the show. Watch that. We should probably watch that on the We're show. We're gonna be like next week is also a viewer's pick. We're watching the Russian movie, <laughs> <laughs> the Russian Avengers movie. Who picked us? Uh, some dude. Didn't well, Stalingrad. I think was the Russian movie that got actually played in theaters here. You remember that? No. The three nope. D Stalingrad no. movie. Yeah. No. And then there was the Night Watch and Day Watch. Timur right. Batmanbekov, I think, is like the biggest Russian current biggest Russian director. Didn't he? Who made the jump? Dude, not. I am number nine. That n- nine. Eight, that nine. nine. Yeah, but he directed yeah. uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire. Yeah, he's, and wanted, he gets. Oh, wanted, yeah. Oh, okay. he sneaks in there every once in a while. Uh-huh. He's, he definitely has a stylistic uh, flavor. Like he's got a style that's recognizable. I think. Yeah. So. Well, he made the jump to over here. Yeah. I don't think uh, this fellow who we mentioned his name before as. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of like uh, Korean directors that come over to America mm-hmm. and start making movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know uh, Chuck uh, 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 Park Chan Wook. Mm-hmm. He yeah. did, um, you know, the, the Vengeance movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sympathy yeah. for Mr. Vengeance and yeah. Old Boy and all that. Mm-hmm. Old Boy came yeah. over here and did uh, Stoker, mm-hmm. which like, <laughs> got a limited release, yeah. and then he went back to Korea and to do uh, uh, The Handmaiden. Oh, uh, oh, oh, the handmaid. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. movie Maybe. was long. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it had good moments. It was well, long. that's not a ringing endorsement. It, it you, you're fine not seeing it. I mean, it's, it's, so yeah, bad. it's. It got, uh, yeah. I saw the Devil's a good Korean horror movie. Yeah, Thir- Thirst is yeah, a really good yeah, Korean that's horror Park movie. Yep, mm-hmm, Thirst. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I saw the Devil. If you haven't seen mm-hmm. that one, you got to no, check it out. Mm-hmm. It's really good. No, I haven't even heard of it. To be honest, that one's. All over the place. That's Isn't that, that guy, getting an American remake? Right. I think so. Yeah. But I, mean, okay. I didn't know it was uh, uh, Korean. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know it was Korean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because it has. Um, oh, what's his name? There's an. Uh, there's a Korean actor. I'm sorry, I can't remember the, the fellow's name right now, but he's uh, Storm Shadow in the G.I. Joe movies. We're going to have a real problem also, remembering yeah. actors' names. Johnny New Jersey is this. screaming at us right now. <laughs> we apologize. I don't have... That's a limitation of us, not the effect that the filmmakers have on us. It's just us not being able to remember shit. There's a. There's a oh, I, I'm having a weird sense of memory of this movie I saw a long time ago called Chaws. Have you guys ever seen it? The South oh. Korean, like monster like wild boar movie mm-hmm. like oh. yeah it came out like 2009 2010 or something like that mm-hmm. and that was really good too I really like that so like they it's because I feel a like wild with, boar movie yeah it's like it's like <laughs> was the host Korean it's kind of like how like our grizzly bear movies right it's like that sure. type of movie but it's like a right. big mutated wild boar but like I think Japanese oh. horror is much more streamlined and focused in its subject matter like they kind of stick to like one or two genres where Korean horror seems to be like they can hit everything just right, like whatever the American yeah. Hollywood cinema you were saying yeah. You know? yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and I've seen some of their action movies too that are mm-hmm. you know like big you know the skyscraper is on fire and we've got mm-hmm. the guys going up and cool. scaling up the side of the, you know I mean they're uh, I'd watch that yeah. right it feels like they yeah. could pull that off better than us mm-hmm. yeah yeah. well it's at least the same as it, skyscraper sure right yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. if nothing else <laughs> <laughs> Um, but tonight's movie, okay, so Train to Busan uh, is a, uh, a zombie movie that, um, well, I mean, I guess, do we just attack the, the film itself here, or uh, or zombie movies leading up to this one? What did this one, re- okay, so it came out in 2016, mm-hmm. right? Late Got, <laughs> for, yeah, for so, zombies. Yes. It, it, yeah. yeah, right, If you, yeah, it really does. Like, what was the, what was our previous, like, touchstone for zombie movies before... 
this one? Like, where, like where, where was our... World War Z. Is that our, like, yeah. last big one? Probably. Especially, like... Well, that's a huge one. That's right, the that, biggest. Right, right. and it's international. So mm-hmm. it's, like, yeah. hitting many different areas. In the movie, at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's World hitting... Yeah. might be, like, the mo- the biggest budget zombie film. I think it probably. is. Probably. Considering who was in it. Like, yeah. Brad Pitt's in it. And... and then before that was, what, like, I Am Legend? If you can count that. I right, mean, yeah. yeah. That it's not your typical. That similar yeah. Zombie Land's in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, it. Zombie Land's in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Zombie Land, yeah. Which apparently but we're getting a sequel to this year. We are getting a sequel. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to get a sequel to World War Z. Yeah, yeah but Finch, Zombie Land's actually Fincher, coming out, like, done and coming yeah, out this Zombieland's year. Right, yeah, Zombie Land's actually happening. Yeah. But yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, World War Z feels like the last And people actually one want of it. Those. <laughs> well, there's like, okay, so there's something, I guess, leading up to Train to Busan, then we're talking zombie movie history, right? I mean, like, you did have all your George Romero's and your 80s Returns of the Living Dead and, mm-hmm. you know, all that. But um, it was like in the 2000s, right, that the zombie movie made a huge resurgence, mm-hmm. which I think started with 28 days later, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Feels like it. Mm-hmm. This is like 2003 or something like that, somewhere in around there. I mean, obviously, there was, and the Resident Evil movie, mm-hmm. I think, was around the same time. But right. If you consider that a zombie movie. Yeah, it's a zombie movie. Yeah, it's a, yeah okay. Uh, well, sure. it has a, the first one. The first right. One the first one is, zombies, yeah. And the second one, too. I think the second one's more so, of a zombie some movie. Some people argue Probably. the 28 Days Later movies aren't zombie movies, too. Okay, so, why? you know. Why? Because people argue it because of how it's passed. Because they right. well because they don't die, they're not reanimated dead bodies. That becomes a lo- that's a lot uh, of the argument with Twenty Eight Days Later. I'm not uh, saying I agree with that. I'm yeah, saying that right. that is an argument that is out there. Yeah. Even at the Eli Roth's horror history thing we were talking about, they, that gets brought up in that even because the, it's just an infection. Yeah. These are infected right. people yep. who are yeah they're not mm-hmm. actually dead. Mm-hmm. They're still alive. Mm-hmm. To be yeah. a zombie, then you have to be. I mean that's the classical definition, right. but I mean you know like I said. It's not an argument I agree with. It's just one that gets brought up all the time, and that's the movie that's always used as as the example. Well, it also introduced the concept of the running Mm -hmm. uh, zombie, I think. Well, no, Mm -hmm. it didn't. Well, it didn't introduce it, right, yeah. uh, Yeah. Yeah. It It capitalized on it, refined it, maybe? Everybody sees that Made it a bigger thing. Yeah. Like it, be, it became a more popular thing, I think, based off of well, that. Well, was it because of that then that Dawn of the Dead, the Zack Snyder remake, the remake? Yeah. Dawn the of the Dead zombies? Like, felt mm-hmm. that they had to employ ro- running zombies? I think zombies. so, especially Probably. if you're going to do a remake of that. you gotta make you got to make your little differences in all that stuff, and I think the running zombie, like, that was yeah. the era. That was the time to do, like, the, mm-hmm. the running zombie. Like, mm-hmm. that was it. Well, because there's something, I guess, about the idea that, you know, like, are we just at a point in time where you think you know that uh, you can, you know if there's a bunch of slow moving people that we can just we can, they're so slow <laughs> yeah <laughs> just I, run right by them as the, the, Night the, Night mo- would say, yeah. Yeah. the modern movie that pulled it off was Shaun of the Dead mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Well, even Zombieland there is yeah. slow I think in that well, they, then, well obviously they the run Walking in, Dead no they, 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 run they, they run in that they run in credits Zombieland. in that movie yeah. oh that's right yeah yeah that one gets hit by the car yeah oh that was great credits yeah. Yeah. And then there was, uh, I, guess, I think the other like milestone was the Dawn of the Dead remake. Yeah. Which we did an episode yes. on it. So we you know, did, yes. It. True. But the idea, that was one of the first ones that I remember seeing like the fall of civilization. Yeah. Uh, it, like, you know, you wake up and the whole world's gone right. to hell. Everything's and, gone, yeah. yeah. There's little hints of it. You know, mm-hmm. so the audience starts to feel this tension because you're sitting there going like, you know, ooh, I know that that report on the TV that they just turned off was the, you know, that was uh, letting you know that there's a zombie apocalypse right. in the wings. And how many times have I seen that done since then? <laughs> Too many. A lot. I think a they lot. even ripped that off in one of the Resident Evil movies. Do they? Like I don't like know. You would know one? those movies better yeah, than Yeah, I was like, you would yeah. know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> part two, I think. I'm pretty sure. That's not my jam, Colin. I saw the first two yeah. and I was <laughs> out after that. Well, didn't you, you guys all saw Bird Box? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. No, no Michaela didn't, Box? but I did, yeah. yeah you, I did. You, the internet has memed it to hell. I feel like I've seen the whole damn movie already, so... Well, then I, you know, at the beginning, they basically have the fall yeah. of civilization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yep. Even though it's not a zombie movie, but it has a lot of... Yeah, it kinda, it kinda, that, that was even is a zombie movie. Yeah. yeah just with just a different movie. psychology to the zombie, basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, like Michaela said, that's debatable because they're not dead. They are not that's dead. true. Mm-hmm. But what? But you're getting that same thing where like yeah. people are in a car driving as things are exploding behind them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that brings us to Train to Busan. Yeah. So that's why when you're seeing it in this movie, 
uh, you know, because I mean, that's basically the, the, the setup to this is that we've got a guy who's a stockbroker, right? Fund manager. Fund yes. manager. That's yeah. our main character. And he is charged with taking his uh, daughter. I'm not sure how old she is. She's like eight, something like that. Eight to ten, yeah. On a train from Seoul. It's hard Seoul. to tell with Asian children. I can't guess ages of any children. Yeah. So right, yes, I yeah, yeah. I'm if I didn't useless. know my kid, I wouldn't know how old he is. Mm. <laughs> everyone, everyone in Korea looks so damn young. Mm-hmm. Can't tell. So young. Yeah, especially that one lady they're trying to pass for an elder. Okay. Lady. Right. <laughs> fake old on lady. On We're going to talk about fake old lady but at some point. Like, wig on her. And, uh, <laughs> do you think she's actually 40, but they, they go like, no, she's uh, 60. Come on, she's 60. They were playing it off here. like that. Yeah, I kind of felt like it. It looked like they started to put baby powder in that wig yeah. to make her gray. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Oof. I don't know what they were going for there. Like, they cast the one older looking lady and they're just like well we need a counterpart she's the best actress she's not old enough but why does she have to be old I don't know like, no idea. <laughs> just make her whatever age she is you know well yeah. I mean I, I get it the character's supposed to be an old woman so cast an old woman mm-hmm. like that's it yeah just- there's not much there's not much to it that would preclude actually casting an older right. woman especially in a movie a with this star. budget I, 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 yeah I, I guess like, yeah. she's a recognizable right face. unless yeah. that is the fact which Korean is always a possibility yeah. yes yeah. yeah. Well, he's got to get his daughter to uh, from Seoul to Busan on a train that it's like a rocket train or a bullet train, the KTX or KT KTX. K- yeah. And uh, so everybody gets on the this train, air. and there are the you know uh, there's uh, you know on their way to the train station. There's they almost get railroaded by uh, fire trucks that are passing. By right. The there's the yeah the just on the outskirts of what's going on, just like. Right, oh, something is going on. There's a fire over here. Emergency vehicles are going over there. Like these things that skirt past our main characters that kind of like raise your spider sense at that point. Just like something's going on. Yeah. When, when they were driving in the car b- right before the, the fire trucks come up, like this was when I really started no- to notice the production value. The way that was shot when they were driving the car looked like a straight up car commercial. It did. I was thinking the see. same thing. I was like, this looks like an like, Audi commercial. I was like, wow, they even <laughs> took the time to shoot like them driving the car. Look yeah. like you have the lights like <laughs> roll. Pulling oh, up yeah. the hood as they were going and stuff. Sure. I was like, this looks like a straight yeah. up commercial. I was thinking the same States. thing. And that very well may be it's a product very placement. Sleek. Yeah. Very yeah, sleek. but every shot of the movie looks that good though. Yeah. You know? It's it wasn't really just that shot. one scene. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a tribute to their the proficiency, I think, of their technical, you know. I mean, so I'm like I don't know. I, I haven't seen enough Korean cinema to right. see like the low budget stuff. It seems like everything that I end up seeing is probably the stuff you've heard of, you know, you yeah. eventually hear of. Sure. And it's like the good slick, you know. I think Chaws is a little bit lower budget for sure. <laughs> but, but, but. It is, it is yeah. slick, but you can still very much tell where CGI and blue screen is used in this movie, especially yeah, where they're I can running. all that in American films. Well, true, mm-hmm. but there's just that look to it. And But a lot of the, I'm looking back, a lot of this movie is like CGI. Like any of those big shots of train stations and everything, like there's CGI all over the place in this mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, because they're trying to give the, it's a post-apapocalyptic thriller, right, where yeah. uh, most of the places that they go to are deserted, so you Destroyed, have to smoking like, of some sort, yes. I think, though, the benefit to us being American viewers and not being familiar with those locations, that is, it's less noticeable, That's right? Because like, yeah. if it was like New York or like Chicago or LA or something like it'd be you know how busy it is yeah well when you just even know what like the general like landscape looks like right. and mm-hmm. the you know the skyline and stuff where I don't know what any of these fucking skylines look like so you know mm-hmm. they could head in all these crazy buildings that might not even be real and I wouldn't know so, yeah it's true <laughs> Well, he's uh, on the train. We're introduced to the main characters of our ensemble. Uh, I mean, the train's full of people, but it's the movie does single out like a, a group of maybe like what six or seven people. Yeah, sure. Like, um, we get the COO, the uh. Mr. Cooper role, right from Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, the uh, asshole, uh, self-absorbed. Cooper. Uh, yeah. businessman right mm-hmm. yep uh, we get the uh, uh, the train one of the train uh, he's not a conductor but he's the, uh, the employee one of the the employee the main yeah. male employee who's with him uh, we are introduced to the baseball team Mm-hmm. Yeah, the entire high school, the, the whole high school team. baseball team, which is whittled down to like the one guy at some point. Yeah, uh, the and his, and his, that comes with his yeah. girlfriend, yeah, his girlfriend, or the one who wants to be as good. Like she's after him. Yeah, when she gets that exchange like, really you can weird. Deny this all you very want. weird. Uh, I, uh, you're mine. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny. Um, then we get uh, our our main character, the dad and his daughter, mm-hmm. uh, and we get uh, maybe. 
I mean, not to parse this out too soon, but our favorite character. Favorite. The, the soon to be dad <laughs> and his pregnant wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. This uh, is an actor. The, the, guy's, yeah. the guy's ripped, too. As, Ma- as Michaela put it while we were watching it, he's the Korean Stallone. He is. Well, uh, yeah, I guess his, uh, his English name is Don Lee, right, is what he okay. goes. Mm-hmm. But go uh, he's a huge uh, Korean action hero who's been Good. in movies called The he Outlaws. You can unstoppable. You can tell he's a huge actor. I, he should be. I was gonna say I'll watch all his movies, man. I, yeah, he I was like awesome. He's magnetic, man. I'd, I'd watch any movie. That he's character was, he was fantastic. Like the Stallone of this movie. He did, did. You know that he was in an arm wrestling movie called Champion? What? Oh shit! It sounds like we need to watch Michaela's this as a follow <laughs> <laughs> to over the top. <laughs> Korean cinema week four continues. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just gonna pick Korean stuff yeah. from here on out. Uh, it's the summer of Korean cinema. We're gonna go through Don Lee's <laughs> oh, <laughs> filmography. Let's put Don Lee on like the you. wall. Yes, <laughs> Don Lee belongs on the wall. Why'd you like him so much? He's uh, he's, he's charming he's, as he's, fuck, he's, man. He is. He's charismatic. It's it's like he can be an, uh, kind of a jerk, but he care. Like you can see that he cares. He's got like, that yeah, sense. Yeah. Side to him, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. He's yeah, sharp he's dressed. Also, he had the the comedy, the comedic relief of the movie. Very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, because he's he comes off as the just a, you know he's irreverent. Maybe mm-hmm. is how you right. say. Right? Yeah. He just doesn't give a fuck about. Right. He's it. not yeah, full asshole. He's, but yeah, he's not. He's not a jerk. Really. He's but he just he like, just says it like it is. And he's the guy you want to be. Who's just like kind of treating all the situations like yeah, this. It feels real. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like this is how you'd react to something like this. This is how you talk to your friends and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's got a little bit act. of a Han Solo energy in that. Like, a little bit. A that little like, bit. you know, I'm going to pretend to not care even though I kind right, of really do. Yeah. 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 That great joke about the uh, ringtone. They use. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that his was phone great! To distract the zombies at one point, and then they're giving him shit about his ringtone. It was like, what? <laughs> Should I change? You- how do I change it? How do I change it? It's a great thing. He's, He's like, like, what's wrong with my ringtone? How, how do, do I, I change, change it? it? <laughs> That's great. That was a such a good bit. joke. I love that he described his pregnant wife being in the bathroom as there's two people pissing in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which you don't get until well, like, oh. At first I was like, is that his way of telling the little girl there's two people fucking that's in there? What that's thought. what I thought he said like, at is first. Is he guarding people fucking? That's what I thought. I was is like. what's going on? And I was like, that seems out of step with this movie. I was right. like, that's it didn't totally like weird. Yeah, going on in this movie. Mm-hmm. But then you get the joke, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Comes and then like, cool. And then like introducing the girl to his pregnant wife and he points at her belly He's like, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? I did. Yeah. He's good. Pretty good, huh? He's great. Yeah, he's good. funny. Good. Which the whole way through the movie, all I can hear is sitting there watching. I've seen this before, but this is new to everybody mm-hmm. else on the yeah. pre-show. And all I can hear is, you better not kill this guy. If this movie kills this guy. Yeah, we got on board with this character. Yeah, so we're just like, every time he gets close to danger, we're like, no, no, don't no. do it. No, we, not him. Like, not him. Like, I don't know if we we're even really rooting for the dad at this point. We were just like, no, not the cool guy. Yeah. Keep the cool guy. Even though we're all just like, oh shit, he's the cool guy. He's going to die yeah. at some point because you don't just like give that character the you know. But God damn it, did he just like ah? I love he's him. He's gonna the die. The most capable guy too. Yeah. Like all the survivors. Right. He's yeah, he looks one. like an action star. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he's a beefy he's dude. Fucking... And he just is out there fucking punching zombies. And... <laughs> and he's able to run fast enough to catch up with a train and jump on it. Like, mm. yeah. Well, I mean, several of them did that. A, a yeah, but he times. like grabbed the riot shield. So he oh, got no, like he yeah. got behind and then caught back up again. No, he had some really sweet action moves during oh, yeah. this mm-hmm. movie. He's the one who like picked the guy up and slammed him into the roof. He's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> so I'm saying, if he makes lots of movies like that, I am all. I for know. That. <laughs> like I'm on board with all of this guy's movies. Well, Johnny New Jersey says that most of his movies have an 80s to 90s feel to them. Even so, better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> saying all the right words. Yeah. <laughs> Might do a summer of Don Lee or something. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think it needs to be. Yeah. Might have to. Don Lee. Well, he, uh, I mean, so all of them are basically, they're on this train and uh, somebody does get on board the vessel right before it takes off. Right before. And this is the, our first infected person. Yes. And she ends up becoming a zombie. And then from there on, I mean, the movie becomes, uh, it's like split between these little character bits where you get to, you know, have the characters interact with each other, you know, usually in duos, and then you have them versus these set pieces where they have to somehow, you know, yeah. evade the and zombies. This, this girl that makes her way onto the train has is my first problem with this movie because it starts the the variances between how quickly people turn. 
because she takes a long fucking time to turn into a zombie and then other people turn almost instantly. Mm-hmm. I wonder if her tourniquet actually helped or not because she like bandages up her leg to kind of maybe like, stop so, it from maybe so, but it happens. If maybe later she on. didn't get bit if somehow because she did, look. yeah, we saw it on her leg. Yeah. Okay, but all but the this, veiny stuff. Well, right, no, have. I get that. You like, know, you ever seen? But it's that, is it like closer to the heart or closer to the brain? Like, but everyone else gets uh-huh. on the hand or arm or some shit. So yeah, no, because you feel like it should take the same amount of time. I I, I thought about that too about the tourniquet maybe mm-hmm. like causing it to slow down a little bit, but it happens again later on. Like the the asshole later on when he becomes a zombie takes him a while. It, it takes, takes the, the dad, dad a while. while. Yeah. Like it takes a lot. It even takes big, uh, Korean Stallone a while. Seems to be convenient for the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for them when it happens, turning. yeah, right. exactly. Because yeah. everyone, like other people, are like instantaneous. Instant before they even hit yeah. the ground. Yeah, like, yeah. like get yes. knocked into exactly. a seat and turn up two seconds later, and they're a fucking zombie. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so these quick. zombies are a little different than our regular zombies. I mean, granted, they are running uh, zombies. All their bones are broken. Yeah, I feel yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I, I did. I did kind of like that. Though. I kind of, I kind of like that. Like, I like it too. The way they like jerked up and their bones were like all cracking in weird ways. I kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, they like that flipping cool. around yeah. and whatever. Yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, with with the like progression though of it, they could have really easily fixed that by just like it's maybe for everyone it starts off really slow and then later on it's fast for everyone and you just say it mutated or something. Have someone drop in a dialogue line of dialogue about how like it must have mutated. It's happening faster, but. Like you said, they do it when it's convenient to them. Right. It's yeah. not linear. I, I, I like it know? better that they didn't because then if they start adding dialogue like that, I'm like, how do these characters know? Like these people yeah. are gonna be freaking well, out and not knowing what's someone, going on. If you're seeing someone on the train with you go from changing in like a half hour to like 15 minutes, you can, sure. You but know. I also uh, the opportunity I think for that would have been like when the big group is just like, no, they're infected. Like somebody like would have known like no they didn't turn like they're still not turned into zombies mm-hmm. they can't be infected yeah like that I feel like that's part of the conversation in that regard mm-hmm. because otherwise somebody would have been pointing that at us so it's like no we we've been here for like five minutes we're still people uh, you know based on whatever else we saw mm-hmm. we're not zombies so let yeah. us in well, I mean yeah but I mean I've always had the question I mean especially in this one why do zombies bite people they're just ravenous I mean, aren't, isn't, aren't they just the constantly as a, hungry? As, yeah. as opposed to what, headbutting well, just everyone no, but, they come okay. across, if that's what all zombies isn't do? Isn't just, just like, eating they, their like, primary directive? Yeah. Well, I suppose, but in this one, they don't What, what do are the that. base They basically, they attack you, they bite you, you know, wherever they can. Mostly, it seems like, on the neck. They chew until they rip off a piece of flesh. Mm-hmm. So they, they get blood all over the mouth. And then they immediately turn to the next uh, person. Well, it's, 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 it seems to be that they attack until they that person is turned and then they stop. Yeah, maybe yeah. this virus is just like yeah. constantly trying to re- replicate itself over and over again. Yeah. And that's its only yeah. motive. Right. Zombie it, movies in right. the 21st century. Right. <laughs> you got to go through the psychology. Like, does the, does the virus recognize when they've done enough to mm-hmm. a person that yeah. they can move on to the next person? Mm-hmm. Is it only trying to replicate itself? As the disease, is right. it trying to cause? Is it going after something that once the body gets it, like it depends. Yeah, on the movie. that's kind of how it seems because it's just like attack, and then once it's changed, then they like are like, okay, mission accomplished. Mm-hmm. Right. They're, As opposed they've turned. to like <laughs> that, that's that's like a difference yeah. between like a hunger mm-hmm. that like yeah. the American yeah. zombie has. Yeah, because then you have if somebody gets eaten and you have bones all over the place because right. eventually you know not they everybody will... turns into a zombie. A lot of right. people get devoured. Well, that's, yeah, and that's <laughs> yeah. the thing with us is like they're trying to eat. They're trying to consume people yeah. not it's, change them eat yeah. them it seems like a lot of the contact too between like the zombies and the victims of this movie is a lot of one-on-one you don't like you don't really see a lot of like in other zombie movies you'll see like a whole horde overtake one person right. tear them apart and eat them that yeah. doesn't really happen no. it happens well, in a or, few occasions two, but not hugely and we don't see like you don't see someone get ripped apart no like, we see uh, you know people starting to get a bunch of people on them but mm-hmm. never like like you said ripped apart mm-hmm. or what the aftermath of that is it doesn't feel like anybody gets consumed no in no. This movie. Yeah. no you just get bit a chunk taken out of yeah. your mm-hmm. hand yeah. or whatever right and then you will turn yeah into a zombie which with m- the milky eye contacts and the spidery veins all over mm-hmm. your face kind of thing. yes it's and a cool look it is a cool look it's really i mean it's all you need really a lot of teeth Mm-hmm. A lot of teeth. A lot of teeth. And uh, the zombie sound. Holly, let's hear the zombie. Your zombie sound. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I don't want to do it. There's just a lot of growling. It's like. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like everybody makes yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. That's like the standard de facto zombie noise. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the only yeah. noise you can make. <laughs> yeah. When you're just, you know. That's that's fine. Just throat's full of blood, did you, Colin. Did yeah. you say yeah. that you saw maybe a movie? I can't remember. So when somebody said that they saw a movie where like the zombies were like completely silent. No. Like I actually want to see so. this. Silent? That sounds cool. Silent zombies. Yeah, because they're dead. They don't make a noise at all. Hmm. That sounds cool. But usually they moan. That sounds scarier too. Yeah, like the old school ones moan. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like the that would be way scarier. Ones do that actually. Mm-hmm. That would be really scary. Yeah. Okay, so if it hasn't been done, copyright twenty nineteen Saturday Night <laughs> yeah. Freak Show. I thought somebody had said that they saw it. Um, yeah, you know, like that scene in the Sentinel where the thing comes out of the closet and doesn't see her. You do that with like a zombie with a silent zombie. You know, they could yeah. pop out of everywhere if yeah. they're silent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But this isn't that movie. No. No. This is and that's fine. an action extravaganza. It because is. Because we've got uh, people in certain cars that have to get to folks in the other cars, but there's zombies in between them. Yes. We have a stopover at a, uh, they get diverted to the, like the first stop. because Which is how they get separated. Yeah, because behind them, they've left the station. They left Seoul, and Seoul has gone to hell. And so they stop at this other station where they're supposed to be met by the military, I think, right. quarantined. Right, they'll yeah. go and get quarantined, and the and the father and daughter are going to go off because he knows somebody within the military, so he's going to get special treatment. Is what he's looking for to get not have to be in quarantine. Yeah, so they stop there. Well, that was a pretty good set piece because all the soldiers have become zombies. Yeah. The yeah, the way that was shot was fucking incredible. When they're coming down the escalator and you just see like hundreds yeah. of feet right. of are they, soldiers right. together are they holding people back. Yeah, yeah. Or exactly. Are they just like what's going on. And you have that. Yeah, you have to go slowly down the escalator yeah. to get the full picture, and then yeah. by the time you do, then you got to run back up the that escalator. Was, that was really brilliant. Run, like, yeah. dude. Run yeah, a pregnant up woman the down. Ex- yeah, run. Yeah. Run yeah. up a down escalator. Yeah. Oh God. This movie yes. does work as far as like uh, the tension building. Mm-hmm. Yes, is it's pretty. Uh, we were very done. audible during this movie. Yes, we were. So the, it's a roller yeah. coaster. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's this definitely movie got it felt to like me, it to me. Like I was all, I was up and down. I was yeah, all, I was with it. Well, Just think like, about oh, it. Shit! If your like whole military is infected, you're fu- you're fucked. Yeah. Like your hope is gone. Like there's, yeah. you're not gonna do better than the military. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is. I mean, as, as far, far as, as large forces to fight things with. Yeah. Go, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's the collapse of civilization, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And once, yeah, once your military goes down, you're just like, oh fuck, what's left? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Busan. Busan still stands. Busan. <laughs> well, For think. now. They think. They hope. <laughs> yeah. There's uh. There's something else unique about these zombies. What's because, that, Colin? Well, the, everybody has to They're have, Korean. Okay. Aside from that. Okay. They also uh, can't That's see in the dark. That's not unique in Korea, Sean. Uh, true. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they can't see in the dark. Is That's that because right. of their milky eyes? Is it because they have, like, cataracts, basically? It feels like they have cataracts. Yeah. And not able <laughs> yeah. To see yeah. That's, yeah. That seems like where they're going. But mm-hmm. they can't see yeah, it right. They can't see in the dark. And luckily- So that, is that the start of, of this zombie apocalypse? It starts from cataracts? <laughs> <laughs> so it's wait, is, is, so wait, is weed going to stop the zombie apocalypse? Maybe. Is that what's? Is I that was going to say, is this now? like supposed to be an analogy for being afraid of old people? Like <laughs> it should be. You should know? be afraid of old people. Like, old people are getting old. You know, maybe worst. it's getting old. But well, both of those are the worst. Mm-hmm. I suppose all of that's in zombie in the whole idea of it, right? It's mm-hmm. always the old consuming the young, mm-hmm. right? Traditionally, yeah, the old. No, no, um, it's a, yeah, or or you could see depends. it as like it's the new wave consuming yeah. the old. It can go know, either way. Yeah. It depends who's making the movie and whose fears are being projected on the screen. Yeah, yeah. It depends on your filmmaker whether they're old or young. Right. Yeah, we'll but like cataracts is not a young person disease. No, you know? no. It's not. It's not. but it but gives, it's something that scares me as a young person. Well, so give the uh, <laughs> evil people cataracts. But I think you need that with like zombie uh, makeups. Can you think of a zombie movie where they don't affect the eyes at all? I mean, I feel like a lot of them are just like look cross-eyed or look in different directions. Maybe not necessarily. Yeah, they have, like, yeah. Dead eyes. I always feel like they do or something. Because I'm trying something. to think back to Dawn of the Dead, the remake, and everything. Yeah, I'm, they, I'm pretty sure the, there is yeah. eyes in that one. Yeah, they had eyes in that one. I mean, like obviously the older films they, had they, right. regular people, but I think it's right. because you know the whole idea of the eyes being the window to the soul. Right. If you don't, you know, do something right. with the eyes with that's, makeup, it looks like a person. Right, and that yeah. indicates the change, like something's wrong, and that's always, and that gives way to the the shot that there is in every zombie movie where if it's the 
person rises up and they turn around real quick. And what's the first thing you're going to notice about them? I mean, they may be bloody yeah. in the well, face and everything. Like <laughs> right. But their <laughs> eyes are fucking different. Yeah. You're well, like, and oh, I mean, shit. realistically, a, a, cor- also, <laughs> a, a corpse's eyes are like that milky. Yeah. Like right from they the get fu- go? I was, I was like, I don't know what corpse eyes well, look like. I was going to say, I never, ch- I didn't check my grandma when she was in the casket. So mm. I don't know what uh, mm. the corpse eyes look like. Yeah. No, that'd be weird if you did. It yeah. would be. Uh, um, I mean, I don't think it's instantaneous, but with zombies, the whole idea of things becoming instantaneous is it's a new, it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like they deteriorate more quickly. So they're becoming a corpse more quickly, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they can still hear in the dark. So like bats, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I kind of like that. I, I like mean, that. That's a. I did too. Take. I, it gives I, it, I, I like mean, I suppose element. that's this movie's big new wrinkle, right? Have there right. been other, yeah. like, you know. They can't. Uh, they can't see us if the lights are out. And zombies. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Think so I mean, that's basically. So it allows you know them time to utilize the fact that they're on a train mm-hmm. and the train's going to go through tunnels. And so when it goes through tunnels, this gives them uh, a chance to move. You know. Yeah. Uh, past the zombies, you got to figure out like what their weakness is. They can't see in the dark. We can get past them as long as we don't make a noise. Is somebody going to make a noise? Somebody's Will the lights come noise. up at an inopportune time? Yeah. Someone's going to step on a pop can. It's built in tension. <sighs> and it yeah. works. It does work. Is it a horror movie or an action film? Both. It's a horror movie. Yeah. It's got Both. action elements, but it's a horror movie. Yeah. Both. Yeah. I it feel also... like most zombie movies have action elements in them. Sure. Yeah, they have with to. Any, especially mm-hmm. if running zombies and all that mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, like, they have sen- to. There's that immediate sense of urgency mm-hmm. Of, mm-hmm. of an attack going on. The, yeah. An attack is action in and of itself. Yeah. So, yeah, you could call it an they're attack. At- they're t- it's tense because, you right. know, the orchestration of the music and the editing, and it's right. frantic. You know? It is. I mean, they're all, if nothing else, they're all built like action scenes. I mean, because they are. You know, Did they just, speed up the footage like yes. of the zombies? Yes. Like Especially like the further on the movie went, when there was yes. more of them together, it definitely looked yes. like they It felt like it was like did. three speed or something. I would say yeah. that. And you could really see it that um, when they're at the train station and everyone's starting to run up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, there weren't just zombies in that shot. There were actual like survivors too, and they were going yeah. really fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You, yeah. Could, you yeah. could sense the speeding up. Are they doing in those moments? Skip frame thing? Yeah. Like, it you, felt like yeah. it. Yeah. You get that kind of strong strobing mm-hmm. uh, yep. whatever yep. shutter effect mm-hmm. where everything's yep. super there's no motion blur mm-hmm. right yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 it's like gladiator or something first did that I don't know gladiator comes up there, again this week right. mm-hmm. Colin's got Oscar, a Oscar thing Colin. for gladiator Oscar. lately best picture winning gladiator best picture. that's right <laughs> that's right Colin's got a it's, never it's forget stuck in his craw <laughs> yeah at this point he'll work it out at some point I don't know how it's but been what almost 20 years at this point right. and you're still still oh, working no. on that that was huh? the moment that I lost my faith in the Academy tiny little Award. Colin but it came back in 2007 right no country for old men it had a conversation for another day. <laughs> I might be coming around on that one, but you there's no sh- hope uh, you for Glenn. And let's get off of that before we start having <laughs> that conversation. Um, train to Busan. Train to Busan. So, so they make uh, that stop at that first one, attacked by the army. Have to get back on the train because it's pretty early on. And whenever he's getting off, you're like, this movie's called Train to Busan. And we mentioned this as watching the movie. It's just like, they can't just get off the train now. Mm-hmm. That would not be right for a movie called Train to Busan. But I liked that because I thought this whole movie was going to be. Can, like a, a bottle episode entirely sure. in the train. I didn't think they'd ever yeah. get off until they sure. got to the destination. Yeah. So I thought right. that I was like, oh, okay, let's do yeah. this. I'm glad they did. Otherwise, mm-hmm. that would it just, good, it, it's it's a good it's a good mix of scenery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it really was. It gives us a little break from being on the train for the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, yeah, and and it in a zombie movie, they have to have those like moments of hope. If you don't have those throughout the movie, mm-hmm. then it's did it. It just doesn't just flow right. It just time. doesn't flow right. But they have that moment of hope when they get to the train mm-hmm. station and you're not sure if there's anyone there or not because it's right. empty. And, you know, his friend had already talked to him to say to go there. So the, his, you have those glimmers of hope and you need that throughout the movie. And it's also the moment that breaks everybody up. Yeah. It separates. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, that, and that's what you got to do if you're in this. You, you have to separate the characters who, like, came in in pairs. So you got to yeah. separate them yeah. in order to give them to give them an objective yeah. to get back together. The, that great moment with Korean Stallone and the dad <laughs> in the in the terminal. Mm-hmm. I like he keeps calling him asshole and jerk and everything. Yeah. Hey, asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asshole, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's his yeah. That moment that's when he's that moment when he's holding the door for him. That was that was just mm-hmm. a great moment. You knew it was going to come eventually, but that was a great moment. Yeah, they mm-hmm. developed like yeah. a mutual respect, I think. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. It's set off, I think it's bad they have a bad first meeting. 
because uh, the the hero character Shuts like the closes door. the door yeah. on uh, so, uh, Karina Stallone dad. and yeah. his uh, pregnant wife. Then it's like, well, you know. Yeah, and he does open it, but he hesitates. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, but well, I, I mean, but that like, that's would. what you would. Yeah, you yeah. would. Like, yes, exactly. I understand. Absolutely. I understand uh, a lot of the uh, the dad's motivations when it comes to his daughter. Like, he's trying to, like, if I had the opportunity and I knew someone in the army to, like, get out and not go through quarantine and get my daughter to that, like, I would definitely do that. Like, yeah. he's trying to. You're trying to decide whether his motivation is more for himself and his daughter, like wh- right. how that varies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is trying to get himself and his daughter safe. Yeah. yeah. So I understand his motivation for doing some of that Absolutely. stuff. Even though a lot of pe- other people are condemning him for doing that stuff, I'm like, nah, it's me and my kid, and I'm going to try and get us safe. So yeah. I get what he's and, trying And to even do. the other passengers are like, look, we're all scared. He panicked. Like, yeah. you know, they weren't accusing so him. So I understand anything. shutting yeah. the door on something I when you don't know what the fuck is going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. You no, keep, shut that door. Yeah. yeah. You got to keep yourself safe. Yeah. And I think that there's still that kind of fight or flight I- human instinct. Yeah. That, you know, it's like you're going to do. These things, because yeah. you're not even thinking about it. Oh yeah, you yeah. just react. And Which the reaction is, is close the door on the thing yeah. that's coming at you. And the right. long and throughout as the movie goes on, the longer this group of people are together, the more they join together as a group instead of individual like fight or flight. Mm-hmm. They're trying to help each other. Right, as a group. As a they, group. They, yeah. They it is nice that they don't like. I like that they when he does shut the door on him and everything, that, but it's never like. It doesn't become a thing that keeps them separate. From exactly. The movie and they're not enemies. They're not. Yeah. yeah. They don't become enemies because of that. Yeah. And it because was because of that. And it was that really nice. great moment in the terminal when it looked like a zombie was coming for the daughter. And then all of a sudden, yeah. Salone yeah. fucking like tackles yeah. him out of nowhere. That's that good. was amazing. Like, it was a good cheer moment. Yeah. Oh, it it really great. is. They handled those two very well. It was great. Well, it seems like the flip. So there are basically like the polar polarizing uh, characters here in this, mm. you know, because you, ha- you know, you saying that everybody gets together and works together but only in this specific group of right. our hero characters because another group. there's another group oh, of survivors God damn it. where but i can kind of understand their motivations as well sure. but it's kind of that you know you see a mob mentality to begin to develop yes. and if there's a strong wind that blows one way you know people will you know gravitate toward this right. and this is the uh the, 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 the head train, the head the train, yeah, the COO. Yeah. Well, okay, so if you look at those two guys, the COO and uh, our hero, the guy, dad the or manager, the dad, yeah, um, you know, so acting in your own self interest is right. The the thing that the, the dad eventually, you know, is like he's trying to protect his daughter and screw everybody else, and then eventually it becomes like everybody who's with us, we're yeah. trying to keep these mm-hmm. people alive, whereas the COO is going like, I just want to, you know, survive myself. Yeah. These other people are fine if, you know. W- if they help me protect myself. Yeah. 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 And then, and then he starts making extremely bad decisions. Yeah. And There's he literally and he literally uses the these people as like human shields. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. yeah I, I don't think I've ever seen a zombie movie before where you literally see someone pick up someone else and throw them into a zombie. I feel like I have, yeah. but I can't place it. I haven't seen it's it. It's really so egregious in this yeah, movie. Like it's it really is. like he it keeps is. doing it. Like he threw that high school girl into a zombie later on, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was the worst character of ever. He, he, like like we said, it's it's built like a video game where it's like the big boss at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Of course he survives to the end to face off against the good guy. Of well, course. I think, yeah, because dramatically he is the other side of our main character, right? right. Am I seeing this wrong? The other side of the coin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because he starts off in the same place. Because I guess, you know, they're saying at the beginning that, you know, because the dad, you know, the drama that's worked into his character arc, at the beginning of the movie, there's several scenes that take place before he gets on the uh, the train. Yeah. And the impression is that, you know, she wants to go visit her mom because dad doesn't pay any attention. Dad's so self-absorbed with his work that he ends up for her birthday buying her a gift that she already has. Yeah. The yeah. Wii, you know. And his mom is, you know, kind of talking to him. And so, like, he is this kind of self-absorbed guy, I guess, at the beginning. Sure. And then spends the rest of it, the movie basically doing selfless uh, acts yeah. of right. heroism until he commits the ultimate, right. you know, uh, self-sacrifice right. uh, 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 for his daughter. We kept questioning during the movie, or at least I did. It's like, does this make up for his years of uh, of, of uh, ignoring his daughter or at least not paying enough attention to his daughter? Well, and, like, does, well, does this one day? 
day, which equals that's, to about like maybe like four hours. That's kind of for it. That's kind of answered in uh, some surprisingly tender moments in this movie. Right. There, when um, it all does it all hinge Co- on the daughter's no, reaction? It's to it's him? when it's when Corinne Stallone is talking to him and he's saying, "Your daughter's young. She, when she grows up, she's going to understand that you made sacrifices for her." And that like I thought yeah. that was insanely yeah. tender. Like it was such a beautiful moment. It's a good yeah. moment. It's like it she'll great. understand why you worked. So yeah, hard. Because but yeah, I he, think but he was thing. talking about working all the time at that point he was talking wasn't talking about all these ridiculous hero moments he was right, having right right so like yeah. no i mean yeah i mean in regard to sean saying like is it wor- is it i know but i'm make saying up for it? korean stallone wasn't talking about all the shit they were dealing with then he was talking about she'll understand why you work so hard right. i know that's that's, that's what i'm yeah. talking no, about I know, yeah. yeah but i think like it's obviously it's easy to forgive your dad when he fucking saves you from a zombie apocalypse. I don't know if that's easy to forgive him if he just worked all the time and never spent any time with you. You but know, the thing I think about his character that, you know, that makes it uh, he's not an inattentive dad because of lack of interest. He's an inattentive dad because he's busy with this work, which he's doing so he can you know afford these things for his family, which yeah. is his daughter. You know, yeah. I mean, so it's that kind of. The motivation there is not like he's a self-centered bastard. It's like my time is monopolized by this, and you know he seems like, pretty checked out. He's so checked out he bought her two wees, or or her grandma like bought her a wee, and he didn't even notice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I check yeah. in every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. I have other people videotaping you at the yeah. recitals, but I'm not actually there. Helicopter so. pan- parent is the opposite of what you're saying. That's right. always like being always, present. Oh, oh, that's okay. so yeah. like yeah. always that's, being right there because yeah. you're literally hovering over them all the time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I Yeah, I, I I mean obviously his his parenting is very flawed and he's not there for his daughter, but they they don't make it seem like he doesn't he doesn't care for her. Right. He has like He's not trying to ignore her. Yeah, right. he he really just has his priorities messed up. Yeah. Is yes. what I pulled from it, but I don't know. Yeah. No, I think that's yeah. I think that's what they're going for. Yeah. We also never get the perspective of the mom though. Like we don't know the yeah. other side of the story at all. So Yeah. It's hard to say. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Yeah, maybe he's a fucking bastard. I don't mm-hmm. think he is, but... I mean, just based on... He's an exceptionally well-composed person, but I thought that of most of the actors, I'm like, this is that just a Korean, like, uh, you know... Stoicism of yeah. the Korean people? Even it feels like that's part pissed. of it. It was like, you know, Americans, I think, are given more to vulgar displays of uh, of emotion. <laughs> sure, yes, probably. <laughs> right? Even when, like, there's... Compared the, to Korean people. Yes, so. at the beginning of the movie, when there's, like, people running in terror from train to train and everything, everyone's just kind of like, hmm. Yeah, but it, it was more terror. like when they were, you know, these two guys were kind of getting in each other's faces at the beginning. Yeah. There wasn't that kind of, uh, you know, getting in right, e- your like, face. Yeah, none of that. Know. Hey, yeah. yeah, there's... But it's like, they were, they, I understood that they're saying basically the same thing. Like, this right. guy's going to beat your ass. Yeah, they just don't get as animated yeah. about things. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, the end. But then, I mean, but then later on, you know, it, I think it makes it even more, even more impactful when he has that moment with his daughter at the very end when he's saying mm-hmm. goodbye. That like, there's not many times that we watch movies down here that I almost cry because something's emotional. Like we've cried because we laugh so hard, mm, but sure. I almost yeah, we don't cried get emotional watching, down yeah. here in the free show. I, I almost <laughs> cried watching that. That was that was pretty emotional. I have a problem with the logic at the end of the movie though. So he, Which part? when he's turning into a zombie he's having memories of her when she was a baby we yeah. see that on screen cuts back to like these really ugh, with, for me it took it out of like soap opera super halo to all white like his flashbacks brain, brain to her happening. but like so is everyone else that's transitioning having memories of their family that's too it, and yet he still has enough cognitive function to kill himself while he's transitioning i don't like again how, they take they take know, their uh they take the opportunity for. But do you still recognize people about? when you fully transition or no? Because he, he's having all these memory flashbacks, literally smiling while he while the right. veins are going it's up not, his face. That it's not yeah. something this movie's concerned about. Answering. But if people do recognize each other while they're in the throes of this uh, virus, then like a lot of other things that happen in the movie don't make sense. I, I don't necessarily think they are. Well, I think but there's I don't think the moment it's, up until death. Uh, you know, at that point, I think it's basically you know the movie's trying to say that. He's dying, mm-hmm. and so he's going out thinking of the best thing in his life, which is, you know, the birth of his daughter. Right. right? I'm just saying and that so, flaws the logic for the rest of the movie for me. 
But everybody else actually has a moment. There's, they always show a moment where they die and then are reanimated. And some later. people was within seconds, so you don't even get the whole like. Well, we're not going. Uh, they right. can't focus on that moment for all these characters, right? But if everyone on the baseball team can recognize each other while they're in this zombie state. We don't I know don't that, think though. they. I don't think they can. Not, that's that's my question, state. though. Yeah. That's they my question. Died. Once they die and come back, they're zombies. They don't recognize anybody. But I think we're. I think that we're getting the recognition from the characters before they're officially mm-hmm. fully gone. That's my question. Mm-hmm. Right. That's I think, what I don't understand. I, think, like, I don't think they're fully gone. Well, we do see them in like veiny and milky eyes, mm-hmm. but they're not fully gone zombie right. yet. So the they still have the ability yet. to mm-hmm. recognize those people. Yeah. And I think obviously the filmmakers are just showing the specific people they want. To show that mm-hmm. happening to, mm-hmm. but I, I I think that once everyone's gone, like there's no mm-hmm. that recognition. And is he had gone. enough time to think to kill himself. I, I have a little bit of a problem with that. You're just dilating the moment, I guess. Right the there, dramatic, yeah. For you know. yeah, I, it would have been better. Like we were talking about, we thought he was going to go over and sacrifice himself when he threw the COO off the edge of the train. I think that would have been a better way to do with that. Possibly, I think the yeah. American version would have uh, definitely given the that bad guy a more gruesome death, yeah, like going and a under the under the mm. uh, uh, maybe a one liner, but definitely under the wheels. Splatter yeah, definitely would have I definitely would, happened. Or in the get American impaled version. on something when something. he gets thrown. Right. I would have appreciated just that. that. Yeah. Just that, I would have. I would have liked. <laughs> I would have liked that. That's what I wanted for that character. I wanted yeah. like a squishy. Like, yeah, you know, I wanted that squishy. A bastard. Yeah, like I want you, that exclamation yes, point on his. You make us hate him this much. We need like we need to be satisfied. Right. Give us something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we Dead. need that satisfaction. Yeah, like, as Americans, yes, I demand that satisfaction. <laughs> so that's the, we're saying that the movie stumbles at that. Ah, uh, I, well, I wouldn't call it a stumble because just because I want it doesn't mean the movie stumbles. But they, what but they, they set you up to want it. Yeah. They made you want that. Well, especially so they didn't follow through on their I, setup. I don't, you There's know what? I don't scene. think they made me want it. I think my. You don't think they wrote him to be hated no, the no, way no, you hated him? I don't him? think they made me want that. I think my viewing as an American and everything that I viewed thus far in the American way of making these movies made me want that. That's the same. He wrote, necessarily. He was written uh, to be hated. Think about sure. the yeah. scene. You know, I mean, this is the, the analogy to this to me to show that the filmmakers understand exactly what you're talking about is that scene where the little girl is in the, the train station and the zombie in slow motion is coming up it's like you know you don't and then they deliver the whammo of yeah. the dude coming in yeah. it's like they know to deliver true and that's yeah. very universal true. language right. of cinema yeah. i think they just chose not to do it yeah but i right. mean i mean ultimately they make us hate him and they make us want him to die he does die yeah so Which they, is, that's what they figured yeah. that's enough they, they yeah exactly the punctuation of the i just right. want him to, i just want him to really standard. gruesomely right. die for as much saw, as he was in this movie like we need a little extra on that that guy. Yeah. We saw way more innocent people get it a lot worse in yeah. this movie yeah. than he did. So. For sure. You gotta save Definitely. the worst thing for the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Rule of thumb. Yeah. yeah. So he could use a little more splatter under those wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because there was a scene earlier where, um, you know, uh, circumstances allow for the zombies to rush into the car where the bad guy, uh, our chief villain, right, yeah. is. And you it's see them so tearing f- through it- all these people. And we were sitting there going like, well, where's the punctuation shot yeah. where we see this guy like, really getting it? Yeah, we're like, oh, well, I yeah. guess everybody in that train got it. It just, it, and it, obviously this is not the only zombie movie that does it, but it boggles my mind when the main villain of a zombie movie is a human. It just, it just boggles my <laughs> but mind. But that's, I mean, that's, I know, like I, that's the, who's the real monster? Yeah. Like that is the question that always I know gets that brought that's, up. It's not uncommon and it, you know, it right. makes, it pushes the story forward, Very true. but it just boggles my mind. I will the, say it did lead yeah. to another very audible situation where it shows him and the other train employee in the bathroom. A surprise. Surprise. They survived. And we all went, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. They're still, still alive. alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I liked in the beginning when when there's the homeless guy in the in the train bathroom and mm. one of the atten- like the train employees, stewardesses, or whatever, says to the little girl, like, if you don't study hard or whatever, you're going to grow up to be like him. And I think uh, or she said there was the COO say that. I think the COO. I think the COO says yeah. that as well. Yeah, it, that, I think so because yeah. the, her response makes more sense. And but she mm-hmm. says, "My mom says whoever says that right. is a bad person." Yeah, she mm-hmm. which I thought was yeah. I thought that was like a nice way of establishing like the like moral compass of the people on sure. the train. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a good. That was a good way. And actually, a thing that mo- maybe more people should take that you know into their lives and think about things that way. I was like. 
I can get on board with this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of the characters, at least the duo characters, the uh, the two el- elderly ladies in quotes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. We <laughs> haven't talked about enough, the I don't think. teen sweethearts. Right. I mean, everybody does have, like, all those character they arcs do pay off yeah, in yeah. these dramatic moments, which mm-hmm. are kind yeah, of... Even uh, the bad guys. It's just like the COO and the, his train buddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They yeah, all do kind of... He pushes into a zombie. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, that guy... I, Deserved it for being like listening to that. Be like, you go ahead. Yeah, coast is clear. Go ahead. It's like that yeah. guy's dumb. Like you deserve to die at that yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 dude. Isn't this kind of a situation where you're not supposed to trust anyone? You're just gonna take that guy's word for yeah. it that the everyone, coast is clear. I will say, everyone is. I mean, this is maybe this is just me. Maybe I'm a, a selfish person at this point. Everyone's a little too trusting of everybody else and a little too gung ho to help save other people. Again, you don't know how you're going to act in these situations until it happens. Except but now we know. Don't go where Sean is in the zone. Yeah, yeah no, for I'm real. All for me. I, uh, so I mean, I might. You guys. If, all right, Sean. It is depends the COO on the. It depends. Yeah, in the, Sean's in the, the CEO. It depends on the person. He's you guys, I might now. be like, all right, like I might grab you and let's go. But again, we don't know. The rest of you. I, I'm just saying. You guys. No, yeah, I have Run a very, faster. I have a very small circle of people I'm going to start saving. So you guys are probably in it. I actually, dis- Sean, I actually disagree with you because if this were an American movie, I would say that's accurate to a post 9-11 world. Do you remember after 9-11 happened and like the, the shoe bomber and the underwear bomber and all these people and you hear yeah, stories about how everyone on the yeah. plane tackled the guy. They took their belts off and yeah. tied him down. They yeah. worked together because they're like, yeah. we're not letting this happen again. People yeah. in like, Canada that yeah, came yeah. out of the woodwork to help people sure. who are stranded on planes. I'm yeah. just yeah. not going to be one of the guys who automatically says, yeah, I would get up and fucking do that. I'm just saying I don't know. I'm just saying I'm, it happens. In, like sure, 9-11 no, no, changed America's perspective on that. No, so. I agree. Is, but these things, these survival kind of movies are always talking about something even more primal than that it's like you can offer assistance to other people as long as your situation is secure yeah mm-hmm. but if everybody's situation has fallen out mm-hmm. then you do kind of gravitate toward these kind of primal like you know mm-hmm. you group to the the strongest one you know, you're going to stay with for protection mm-hmm. yeah. or you're going to you know do this and i think like that is where you actually see like what people are really made of and sure. unfortunately you know, well, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, we see all this stuff in, in the movies. Most of the times, you know, in uh, in real life, uh, things don't deteriorate to completely apocalyptic, uh, you know, uh, situations. But right. we do see stuff like, you know, you're looking at. Uh, I always think like, when you see these zombie movies. And you see like footage out of like the Z- Venezuela protests or stuff that's going mm-hmm. on now, and there's fires in the streets. Like if you turn the sound off, these things look they they, they share similar imagery. Yeah. yeah, which I think is the point of these movies. Sure, right? yeah. is to kind it of is. give you this like mm-hmm. the the dry run yeah. <laughs> psychologically. Right. Like, what would you do? In these situations, like, mm-hmm. you know, what kind of a person are you? Yeah, and the you get to run through that. Public no. interest in zombie content always peaks at times when the trust in the government is its weakest and usually when we're at war. And if you look at when we were talking about earlier, how like in the 2000s zombie yeah. movies came back, it yeah. coincides with like yeah. going to invading Iraq and 9-11 yeah. and the like housing crisis and the, you know, the, yeah. the yeah. stock market crash and everything. All those things that happened within like a five year span yeah. it really pushed that stuff to the yeah, peak. Yeah, to the biggest the mm-hmm. zombie, uh, the zombie in pop culture I think has ever been. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the biggest. Absolutely. I mean, it feels like I mean, it's that's... on the decline now. Sure. Walking Dead's still on. Yeah, but, no, yeah. Yeah, but to it's, a It's not doing well. Yeah, it's limping along, but that's, yeah. That is true. It's true of zombie movies. It's true of horror movies as well. Um, I mean, can you, what other what other genre movie can like claim that to to go along with that and to be to, you know to kind of mirror what's happening in that's society at the like, time? I, I mean, I, I'm not there a are movies, of, sure, like, comedies to see right. like the trends and you know like whatever right. how it references the. But with horror movies, you can it's because an, horror uh, it's movies more obvious. Well, because I think. they're the the horror movies poke at the anxiety of like a society. Right. Mm-hmm. And this and is so just that's me. Why you can see like mm-hmm. you just look at when the movies were made and you know what the trends were. You right. can tell what people were anxious about. This it. is just me condemning the Oscars for ignoring horror when it so clearly is. Sometimes a, a they don't want to look in that mirror, of, you know? Right, yeah, and mm-hmm. maybe that's it. But when it's obviously a bigger part of, like, society as a whole and it gets looked down upon, mm-hmm. uh, that's just me condemning that. So mm-hmm. yeah. there's that. I don't think... Fuck the Oscars. Uh, Colin, I think is a, in general, obviously it's not true for all. I don't think comedies try to shoulder any of that commentary. I don't think that they're interested in doing that. I mean, that's the in, point of the comedy, I that. think, at that point. No, but like, I think that maybe they're doing something else about cultural mores and things that are you know, I don't think there was any thought put into that. No, but, but you have to make a... 
your audience only responds if they enjoy it, if they mm-hmm. find it funny, if they, res- mm-hmm. you know, so you can kind of chart like, you know, where people's what was funny. Right. When, Humor at that point. Yeah. yeah, what, yeah. what they found funny, because I'm sure, you, you know, you show a uh, comedy made 1960 something to somebody now, are they mm-hmm. going to, you know, find the right. jokes funny or vice versa? If you could go back in time and show, you know, a modern yeah. comedy to somebody from 1960, would they be appalled or find it funny? Right. Is something universally funny, always funny. Yeah. You know? Right. I mean, you can, a great, a great representation of that is watch SNL from the beginning all through the years to now. Oh, sure. Can, I mean, that can, may be the biggest that's the, like, like you barometer can, of you that. You can see it. You can see the the jokes that will still stand, mm-hmm. and the ones that are clearly just of that time. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the the also like like you said, it's based on the like the social mores and all that stuff of the times that it comes yeah. out. But so horror yeah. is always looking at the anxiety. Yes. Of, you know, yeah. yeah, I think comedy is largely trying to provide you like a relief from everything horror is holding up a right. mirror well, to. But it so. will also push on the issues of the time to do that. It's trying to relieve you of those yeah. things. Some do. T- some do, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, this is definitely not a mm-hmm. catch-all for that. But some do, yes. That's why mm-hmm. SNL is a great representation. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the opening sketch is always political. Right. Mm-hmm. Always. And it yeah, it ages poorly. Right. Well, yeah, it, it does. It, it ages really very does. poorly. It will either. <laughs> it will, but very poorly. Yeah. And it will also age in that way Which is well. ages poorly because think about just who was running for office 20 years ago. Sure. And, like, not, not even, like... Think of all the people that ran in the primaries that they're going to make jokes about the, you know... Right. It's yeah. not well, even... Yeah, the, the context <laughs> yeah. That stuff does not age well. greatly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's, uh, we've been talking about Train to Busan. Tell you what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to talk more about Train to Busan. We're going to go around the table and tell you each individually what we thought of it because we're the superstars. You want to hear mm-hmm. what we have to say. Mm-hmm. And we're going to tell you whether or not we recommend it to you. But first, we're going to answer some of your mail. <laughs> you said that. You said that. And I was like, wait, what are we doing first? I, I, I forgot what we do. But first, like, what is, wait, where are we going? Are you, do, we, do you know who you're calling on first? No, okay. he doesn't. But before we get to that. <laughs> I, I had I had it all down. Two weeks in you know, a row. No, it's like, no it's, you it's, fucked it up two no, weeks in a row, No, Sean. it's viewer's choice that is fucking me uh-huh. up. That is, that is, uh, it's broken. It doesn't change up. the order we go around it the table. It me up. <laughs> I'm still fucked up. All right. Well, but I got it tonight. I'm all good tonight. I know who's going to be called on first. I know whose pick is next week. I'm good. Well, why don't you summon our mailman, <laughs> Igor, <laughs> to bring us the mail? Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. It all helps that it's me. <laughs> uh, should we tell the good folks at home how they can get a hold of us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. What about on Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join in and join the Freak Show family tonight. Please. We hear about. Oh, uh, do we say? We did say that uh, Trina Bassan was recommended by Johnny New Jersey. Uh, poor little dude writes in. Oh. And no. says, Train poor to little Busan. dude? Yeah. Why? Why is he poor? You Don't ask to, personal you, questions, Holly. You'll right? have to tell us. <laughs> poor little dude. You can't just ask someone why they're poor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, poor little dude. Oh, that makes me so sad. <laughs> writes in and says, Train to Busan features the most hateable dude in movie history. Yes. Yeah. I, oh my he's God. up there. I can't think of anyone. Yeah, well, I, I mean, like Mr. Him. Cooper from Night of Living. I mean, if you go yeah, zombie Cooper, movies, like that is it's he's, the equivalent. He's the model. Like, yeah. I'm just yeah. thinking movies in general. Mm-hmm. The stepmom from The Parent Trap is up there. Oh yeah. Well, there's some <laughs> yeah, like irredeemable people that generally don't have like any kind of. Uh, at least this one tries to give this guy a little bit of shading. It's lazy screenwriting. Was just like this guy's an asshole from get what you know, uh, frame one to the end. Uh, B movie poster vault. What's up? Says fantastic fan pick. I was in zombie fatigue due to near endless parade of flicks getting crapped out on a daily basis, but this one is great. It manages to add some fresh spins on the genre, so you're not watching the same cliches in the same order as every other Romero wannabe. True. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I definitely had that concern going into this. I was like, I am not really feeling zombie movies anymore. Right. But. And yeah, that's the thing. But it's nice and, and he's right, because like you can make a zombie movie kind of at any budget level at this point. Yeah. Because all you need is like a little bit of makeup to be like, hey, look, it's a zombie. And yeah. so you can get a lot of repetitive shit yeah. in that genre. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I it's a, it's an exhausted. Uh, it's genre. exhausted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at some point, I think I've seen. Yeah, oh. you've seen every permutation of the end of the world. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nick Siebel writes in, and he says, "I saw this a few weeks ago on Netflix. Wow, I was surprised surprised how great this film was. It's one of the best zombie films I've ever seen. And as a parent now, it really got me emotionally involved, even teary eyed toward the end. Yeah. I'm not sure how I'm even going to watch The Lion King 2019." <laughs> Well, That's the good fair. news you is you know it's coming with the Lion King, so yeah. you can prepare. Yeah, you, have, you have an idea. Yeah, no surprises there. True. Yeah. Uh, Amos Martinez. <laughs> hey, you don't know. Mufasa lives. All right. I mean, I yeah, doubt it. Big, From the frame change, by frame change. remake that was the trailer, I really <laughs> I doubt, doubt it. it. Uh, Amos Martinez writes in and says, This film is phenomenal. Way more dramatic than I was expecting, but it works. We'll yeah. get to it in wrap-ups. Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Uh, Nikos Borgris writes in and says, uh, oh, sorry, Pogris, writes in and says, great flick. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you for writing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, about last week's episode, Magic, Chris Huddleston writes in and says, the trailer for Magic terrified me as a kid. I actually didn't see the movie until about 2003. Yeah, the trailer's it's, really, uh, really scary. It's 16 years uh, earlier than we saw it, so... Uh... I can't believe that that, like, Kyle and I were talking off mic last week, that that trailer showed on, like, network television, right? Yeah. Like, we were saying back <laughs> in the day when it ran, there weren't restrictions on, like, what day well, part the time, you could yeah, run it. Yeah. yeah. After nine o'clock, you can run this trailer yeah. and everything. They're just like, show it! Yep. Yeah. Soap operas! So, <laughs> magic! So it traumatized a whole generation. Right. Just uh-huh. from a trailer. The good old days when mm-hmm. you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> where I would see shit I should not see mm-hmm. on TV. Yeah, because now I don't think... Can you advertise an R-rated movie before no. like 7 o'clock no. or something like that? No, I don't that? think so. Yeah. Well, no, I'm sure on premium a, cable you can. Sure, yeah. There's, well, right, mm-hmm. yeah. Things like that. But on like network television, eh, mm-hmm. nope. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fresno Film Buff writes in and says, Magic is a really good movie. It was, yeah, it was great. We, agreed. It was we recommended we that one, I think, mm-hmm. all I think around all the table. That one. It was good. Except for Holly, who missed it. Sorry. <sighs> I'm sorry. You should uh, watch it. It's good. Okay. <laughs> okay, about uh, the previous week's episode, we got a lot of mail. This is the movie that keeps on giving Super <laughs> Mario <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> so this is oh, Super man. Mario Brothers Part 2. Josh Zemer, Wait, part two. the Zemer. one who uh, re- went to Ikea to ask about the sexy netting. Ah, sexy netting. Oh, yes. my God. <laughs> I remember You're it. my yes. favorite Zemer. ever. I love that. <laughs> he says, as a kid, I had a strange love for for it and I still do even now even though a lot of it's based on nostalgia but there's a charm to it for me that I enjoy on the same level as Sean seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> he's still talking about sexy netting right that's what he's talking about okay I like to imagine him sitting on his bed under a sexy netting watching Super Mario yeah. Bros. I, like I'm him, actually, I like to imagine him preparing to watch and just folding the sexy I'm actually down I'm, per, like, ah. I'm imagining that his entire room is just sexy netting <laughs> just, <laughs> just why, everywhere why netting? because he actually went to Ikea and yeah. who do we we don't know if he actually got it I don't know that, I assume Bought the whole stock. Uh, assuming that they have that, right? They do. Uh, they, they do. No, they, they do, do have okay. it. That, didn't yeah. We, yeah, didn't we? That, figure that's this out? I've seen it at IKEA before. They had. Well, it. Isn't that what he said when he wrote he in? Went, yeah. he, 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 he asked, he asked the it. associate, and they knew what he was talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> he, the associate was like. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm Follow pretty me. sure that's what happened. They have it set up in their bedroom displays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I also, as well, Holly got me sexy netting. <laughs> I sure for did. My, for my uh, sure. housewarming gifts. So I sure did. I have sexy netting. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, well, he also goes on to say, I agree with Colin that the soundtrack is really good. And when, you're, when you were all comparing the look of the film to others, I realized that this movie was ripped off by Stallone's Judge Dredd. I think we said yeah we, we yeah we there's talk about how there's of, there's a lot of similarities similarities to like Demolition Man and Judge Dredd yeah yeah, yeah. That, that, that was yeah. That, some Pluto and yeah. Ash yeah. in there too. yeah yeah there's, there's the same feelings are yeah bad, yes he wants us to know that every time Igor brings the mail his dog's ears shoot right up so Igor has a fan <laughs> oh. Tell us uh, all about your dog. Your dog now. Uh, What's your dog's name? What kind of dog yeah, is it? Yeah. Kind of, I, it, yeah. Uh, Igor would be a cute name for a dog. In video of this moment, you know. It would yeah. Be. Uh, Andrew John says about Super Mario Brothers. Oh, geez. This damn movie. I think this was the first movie <laughs> as a child I, I realized. Know. 
<laughs> in the first movie as a child, I realized that a movie can be bad and not a magical yeah. experience. Yeah, that's such a crushing moment. I, I oh, sad. I feel I like, that. like oh, I didn't like. <laughs> See, it. that's I, the moment the childhood ended. Yeah, yeah. you have to yeah. hang on to that as long as you yeah. can. I can't pinpoint my moment, but I feel like mine might have been this movie too. <laughs> I think like, I tried to forget what mine yeah, was. Like, yeah, I'd have to yeah. think to figure mm-hmm. out. Because I was when, when yeah. I was first disappointed by movies. Mine I was, was when Gladiator like won the. Oh, oh my God, Colin! Colin, you were lucky then because you were an adult at that point. I was gonna say if you held on that long, oh boy. Travis Legler writes in and says the animatronic. Yoshi Dinosaur was the only part of the movie that I really liked. It was really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Blaine Peltier writes in and says, I remember seeing this movie in the theater as a kid and thinking it was shitty. Might have been my first <laughs> negative reaction to a movie. Thank you, Super Mario Brothers, for popping my cynic cherry. Oh, so this, so every this kid. This killed a lot of yeah. Uh, yeah. imagination. That's what I'm getting to. Every that. kid had two. There was two only two reactions as a kid. This movie, you love it or <laughs> it ruined like, oh, all oh, movies oh, for yeah. you. Wait, have we met anybody who loved it? Sean, you didn't actually. Love Did, it. A lot of people. Not, not, not a lot of people said they love it out of nostalgia because they watched it as a kid. A lot yeah. of people have said Sean that. Sean didn't like it, but he's nostalgic for it. I'm very nostalgic for you. Yes. You were yeah. giggling the whole time we were watching. Because there's the movie. Still, oh, there's shit that is like yeah, but that it didn't ruin movies for you clearly because you enjoyed watching it. No, it didn't. No, it did not ruin just like. Uh, it he did lo- not. It do- it, this was not the movie that made me realize that like movies can be. Bad. Yeah, exactly. Like, ah, it's, it's funny. It's dumb, but it's funny. <laughs> he loved that movie. He just can't admit it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Shaky mm-hmm. subject I, I matter. I did love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. You s- okay. still, I don't still love do. that movie. Still but I still did do. love that movie. He was giggling like a school like boy a little girl. while he was yeah. watching mm-hmm. it. Giggle at shit. Uh, shaky subject fun. matter writes in and says because we were talking about uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers was directed by the duo who created uh, Max Headroom yes and we were talking about uh, Max Headroom uh, somebody hijacked a uh, the TV signal, signal yeah, in real life yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, shaky subject matter says hey that Max Headroom thing happened during Doctor Who on Channel 11 WTTW when they played it at 11 p.m. on Sundays I remember Max was on Cinemax and the show was on ABC I think well you're right actually because I remember watching the show on ABC, Max mm-hmm. Headroom. Mm. But I guess he yeah. must have started on Cinemax. So thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Sean Roger writes in and says, I saw Super Mario Brothers at the cinema. Afterwards, me and my friend went and bought Snow's Informer on Casingle. <laughs> oh, I love that Kasingle. sentence. Kasingle. That's a great sentence. <laughs> Do you remember the Kissing? Do you know what they we're talking about here? Kissing, yeah, yeah. 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 It had enough wow. tape on it for like three Just minutes. Yeah, Kissing. And like flipped it over, and it was another wow. song. Yep. Songs like Informer were the songs wow. that were on Kissingles too. It wasn't anything mm-hmm. actually good. Kissingles, that's amazing. Informer. Well, uh, Dom oh, Cree shit. also writes in and says, Wait, "Have we heard from Dom in a while? I don't think so. I don't it feels think like so. it's been a while." He said, "This is non-feedback, but I'm reading it anyway." Uh, in the early stages. Of my VHS collecting phase. I stumbled across Super Mario Brothers and was so pumped to find it. Alas, when I actually put the tape in the VCR, I was brought down to earth very quickly. The movie stunk. But the action figure merch is pretty cool. He, oh. And he had a picture of the action figure merch, it which was cool. actually pretty cool. The Dennis Hopper <laughs> like, one was really right. awesome. Right. Yeah. Everything was pretty movie accurate. Like, yeah, I they like movie these, accurate. They were. Yeah. I like these action figures. Hmm. Is that just a picture? He has them. I think he has them. I think this is a picture. Uh, We're divided on that. uh, Dom, let us know. (laughs) I'm pretty Uh, sure he said he bought them. Dom, let us know. I think it was just a picture, but that's Mm -hmm. just me. All right. Um, Dom, let us know. Well, now we're going to go around the room and we're going to find out what each of us thought of Super Mario. No, we didn't. We watched. (laughs) That's like me calling on someone else to give their review. Uh, You fucked up. Sean. Starting with Sean. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Sean. I didn't have to announce it. (laughs) Um, Train to Basan. Um, I really had a good time with this movie. Uh, It's been on my list for like, uh, because Colin uh, brought it up and he watched it one night. I was just like, oh, that that, I've heard about this movie. I want to see this movie. And it's been on my list for like, uh, like probably a year, two years at this point um, that I want to see this. And uh, I really enjoyed it tonight. It's, uh, any zombie movie, because I think we've all suffered from zombie fatigue at this yeah, point. Like we've sure. we've seen what zombie movies can bring us, and uh, once you keep doing it enough, um, sometimes it can get you know boring. Zombies yeah. are zombies, um, but I feel like this movie um, brought a uh, 
a lot of unique elements to it. I liked that it was just on a train. Um, again, they get off uh, on certain parts, but the most of it happened on a train. There's, uh, you know, f- them getting from the like back to the front of this train. Like it uh, introduced unique obstacles for the characters to get through um, that I personally hadn't seen before. I don't know if they have ever shown up in other zombie movies, but I'd never seen them before. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate them doing that. Um, the characters, I think, were like really well written. Yeah. Like I said, we were it, we were audible during this movie rooting for these characters not to die. And I think if you can do that in a zombie movie, I think like you've achieved something if you've written the characters that way. Um, and we were definitely very audible and not wanting a lot of these characters to die. I'm looking yeah. at you soon to be father of the pregnant woman. Yeah. He was uh, Don, Kore- Lee. Don, Don Lee, Lee, Korean Stallone. Uh, we like you. Uh, we like what you do in this movie. Um, I had a really good time watching this movie and uh, I think it did a lot of things that I hadn't seen before in a zombie movie. And uh, because of that, um, I recommend this movie. Uh, very entertaining to me. Um, if you can get me yelling in a movie, uh, especially a zombie movie while I'm watching it, like that's all thumbs up from me. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I recommend this movie. I had a really good time watching it. I'm glad I finally got to see it. So yeah. that's a recommend for me. Holly. Um, yeah, no, this, this movie was firing on all c- cylinders for me. It was just, it hit all the points that I wanted. I, I was very much impressed with the, like you said, the new elements that it brought to being a zombie movie. Like, you know, we talked earlier about how, there was the moment when they realized that the zombies couldn't see in the dark. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a really interesting twist that I have not seen in a zombie movie. And you know, it wasn't, it wasn't lame at all. It worked. I I thought it, it worked really well with the story and the story was so well written. These characters were well written. It was put together in such a beautiful harmony. Like it flowed so well. I was not bored at all during this movie. Not once was I it's bored during this movie. Yeah. And, you know, we watch a lot of strange movies here. We watch a lot of weird movies. We watch a lot of boring movies. And this movie, I think, is one of the first ones we've watched that at no point was I was I bored at all. Um, I, I'm really impressed by that. A testament to the writing. Yeah, absolutely. It was it it was action packed. It was exciting. It was nerve wracking. It was tense. It, it was a really fun movie to watch. It had a. I mean, we talked about it had a couple problems, and honestly, like that's just nitpicking. I don't even care. I I had questions in this, but I didn't even really. I don't even really care about any of that. It was just a really fun movie to watch, and I highly recommend it. It was. It, it was it's it's the kind of movie that I would even recommend to people who don't necessarily like zombie movies or horror movies. Right. I think this could transcend a border of people that disregard horror movies. I I, I think do it has people, do they want a movie where they can root for someone? Right. I think that's this movie. Yeah. I, I I think it it has just real validity um as 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 a film. I, I, I think it's I think it's going to appeal to lots of different kinds of people, which I think is a really incredible testament to any movie, but especially a movie that can constitute as horror because it, a lot of horror movies don't give horror a good name. And I think this one definitely does. I, I think it's, it's a real, I think it's a really great movie. I highly recommend Michaela. So I went into this kind of, a little hesitant because I feel like I feel genre fatigue much more sensitively than some other people. Um, so I've been checked out on on zombies for a long time now. Um, so I was kind of like, "Are is it really going to be able to do anything that I haven't seen before?" It's like an exhausting genre. Yeah, it really is. And yeah. I, you know, I just with the title, I was like, "Okay, so it's going to be a bottle episode of a movie where it's all just going to be on the train, and there's only so many things you can." do in a contained environment like that that we haven't already seen before you know obviously some people are going to work together some people are going to turn on each other but you know i was like it's not gonna be anything i haven't seen before but it was a lot of things i hadn't seen before actually so i was yeah. very pleasantly surprised by that um the production value was insanely high mm-hmm. um the acting was really good across the board uh i just want to see more korean horror movies now because like i, I the few yeah. i had seen were really good but they were so different from this um, I, yeah, it was really good. I was, and like so many people had told me it was really good that I was like, okay, yeah, well, you know, even like the best zombie movie is still not a movie I really enjoy, <laughs> you know? Um, so I was like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, I'm really glad I watched it. I know sometimes we talk about movies being too good for the freak show, but I think it's okay if every once in a while we watch something that's too good for the freak show. I, I, think, just, uh, I think we need it. Yeah, yeah. Just, right. uh, we need to recharge a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's nice to get there. Yeah. Like, oh, I liked it. Yeah. And so like, even though this listener request month started off on a really sour note, it's ending on a like a really high upswing, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. Really... It started as low as it could go. Yeah. And then it went up high. The <laughs> idea that we watched Detention not that long ago and people wanted us to watch that and also wanted us to watch this i'm just like i don't know what that says about anything but um, <laughs> even if some people may have gamed the system it's still yeah i don't yeah they care enough to about what right. we think they that they that, want so, yeah so uh yeah you definitely gotta see it definitely recommend it it i like even my minor nitpicks with it it's still like it's not that important yeah, to the grand scheme totally of movie. uh it delivers i think on everything you could want and more for this type of movie uh mm-hmm. it's I, I'm really curious about like the director and the writer, and I kind of want to go down those paths and see what other things they've made. And, uh, I think I'm not sure if it's to this movie's advantage or not that it came out at the end of the zombie thing. I'm not sure if it would have. I mean, I'm sure this movie was really successful because I feel like a lot of people saw it. Was it was really successful yeah. worldwide. Good. Gotcha. Yes, it uh, made 81 million on a budget of about 10 million US. This Good. was only 10 million. Good. Yeah. I feel like it looks so much more expensive than that. I would have guessed yeah. like 50 million. It, well, your dollar goes further, I guess, maybe. It depends guess, on the exchange rates. Yeah, that's but... A, that's like, a good train set, mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, there's train wrecks and special effects and stuff, yeah, though, in this movie. Never, like, there's no wobble inside right, the train. Yeah. Mm-hmm. dead steady the whole <laughs> right. I was like... Mm. But well, out, well, that's the, what I'm out the windows... Like, yeah, yeah, right, out the windows, yeah. everything looked great. So yeah. that's a very good train set. Mm-hmm. But that's where they were the entire there's time. There's still a train wreck in this movie, mm-hmm. though. That You know, like in yeah. an American movie, that alone would be $10 million to do something like that. So mm-hmm. uh, I would definitely recommend you guys check it out. It's... Uh, yeah, even if you feel like you're just defeated by the genre and you can't do anymore, you know, I I, I can't believe things like this are existing at the same time as The Walking Dead is still on the air. <laughs> like, because there's no way that show is doing anything nearly as cool as this movie. So, Colin. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been putting it in the context of other zombie movies, but uh, where basically, yeah, like, I mean, everybody's been saying that that's a genre that's played out. I mean, I'm I'm fine if this is the last zombie movie that I see, <laughs> frankly. Sure. I mean, I'm a, a, a fan of, of horror movies and zombie movies, but I've seen so many of them that at this point, like, you really do think like you've seen every unless you can come up with something startlingly new. You know, and did this movie come up with uh, anything necessarily startlingly new? Um, I didn't really think so. I think uh, it was a, a lot of what I saw in this was, you know, the the collapse of civilization, Dawn of the Dead, the zombies. There's a lot of zombies uh, in this one. The running creatures, you know, uh, kind of uh, coalesce into kind of like ants, termites. Like you saw right. this in World War Z. Yeah, I noticed that when they start piling to, uh, up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they hang on to the the, right. the rudders of the uh, helicopters. Yeah. You know, and there's all sorts of, you know, they're just all over the place. Yes. So it, even in visually, you've seen the zombie makeup before. You've seen the, you know, you've seen them attack this way. A lot of that's the same. We didn't say, uh, you know, uh, train movies, great, great train movies. Maybe great, not so great. Dark Territory, uh, Under Siege 2. Oh, you. Hells, oh, hells oh, yeah. Colin, I'm a fan. Hells yeah. <laughs> right hells here. Hells yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you got... Uh, Catherine Heigl. What, yeah. <laughs> Runaway Train, right? Snowpiercer. Sure. Yeah. Another Korean uh, film, uh, Snowpiercer. Yeah. There seems like there's one narrow <laughs> margin <laughs> with uh, Gene Hackman. He's got... It. Yeah. Where you have to get from one end of the train to the other end. You can't... <laughs> Murder on the Orient Express. What a yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's a bunch of, to me, it, it's not so much uh, like a, a horror movie as much as it is like it's an action film that's got a lot of, because it it feels like you're watching an action movie. Mm-hmm. You know, my reaction to it, the visceral reaction, was the way I react to, you know, gut-churning, very intense uh, action moments. Mm. And it's just action from pretty much like 10 minutes in straight to the end. And even when, it, you know, it does what all good action movies do where it, it sets up, you know, there's tension. Even when the characters are talking amongst themselves, you realize that there's a bigger picture outside of them and you still have to, you know, get to the end of this obstacle. And so it's still always on your mind. Um, the characters, you know, it's like, I don't know if I thought that they were necessarily really well written because they are very much types, you know, I wouldn't say they're, 
like exceptionally well drawn, but I think the people playing them, I think I it's say, one of very well acted, if nothing they, else. They, yeah, the, yeah. The, the actors are have personality that kind of they bring that through and are able to deliver, you know, their uh, their performances. So I thought it was really well acted, really well directed, really well shot, edited, technically aces. I mean, I would recommend that you see this movie. Um, you know, and it's uh, emotionally affecting, I think, which is the thing. If you compare this to its closest counterpart, which is like World War Z, you know, uh, um, you know if we're assuming that we can go that far, right? It feels like say it. World War Z is the analog. Um, this one figured out, like, you know, you really kind of have to base these things around a uh, human core where, you know, World War Z is... is more about the uh, you know we got a dude who's got in the spectacle he's got to travel the world and see that you're looking at the macrocosm and this one mm. does what a good movie does and says yeah it exists within that but really you have these people you know and that's what's where your interest is and I think it pays off all their arcs and I thought it was really well put together so yeah uh, I think that's four. Um, yeah. recommendations think so. for Train to Busan. I think it's too good for the Freak Show. This is too a good legitimately for, good too movie. Good. Legitimately good movie. Yeah. Too good for the Freak Show. It's okay to have one every okay once to, in a yeah. while. It really is. Right. It's, it's, it feels it's, too classy it's a palette, in some way. The but then you go like, to watch like the rest of the stuff and it's like, well, that's no Train to Busan. But it's like, yeah, you gotta... Well, yeah, they're oh. in different <laughs> leagues, you know? I can easily forget this and in going into the next movie. All right, well... Would you rather watch more movies like Detention? I don't. I don't want to watch movies like Detention. I think there's a good in the middle we can find between (laughs) Detention. I liked Detention. I did. So, yes, I would. It's it's an adventure finding those movies. This one is like, well, yeah. Yeah, and we do that 90% of the time. I'm saying every once in a while, it's fine to, you know, mix it up a little bit. It's nice to cleanse the palate once in a while. I feel like uh, we've gone, it's the beginning of the year. We've gone through the listeners' picks. I think we've. Let that wash we over land us. We landed a high note. We're, yeah. We're, yeah. we're ready to start a new. Well, Colin. that sets us up for next week. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Sean. We don't know what's going to come out of his mouth, but he's been waiting to do this. He probably doesn't know. Either. I know exactly. <laughs> what are we watching next week? Watching a movie called Valentine. Oh, cool. I've never seen this. Right. You've never seen nope. this? Nope. Never seen I have it. not yeah. seen this. Because no. we're getting into that time of next month in February, or this month, as it were, when you will be listening to this, or watch Valentine. Right. Jamie Blanks, same director as Urban Legend. That's right. I've mm-hmm. seen this movie mm-hmm. twice and don't remember a damn thing about it. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it a couple times. So the it's movie that's going to be so great to visit it. A calorie free horror movie uh, that you uh, consume so it good. and then it evaporates. R- so good. That I wish more movies were like that sometimes. Right? It's right calorie free. How many yeah. times have you seen it before this? <sighs> Probably like three. Yeah, Shot Factory's got a nice yeah. Blu-ray. Okay, okay now, so it's right? not just me. It is one of those movies that like instantly evaporates the moment yeah, oh, you're yeah, done. Just so that's start. why you have to listen to our episode when we talk about right. it, because we're going to be fresh <laughs> off of watching it. How long does it take? Before the movie evaporates from your mind, right? Will it we could make do it, it mid show. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll find out next week <laughs> on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>